the new story is in Ukraine is, yes, I think it is coming to an end. But then what? For Russia yeah. and Ukraine, not for the West. West does not give... Dan Waltz, how are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for having me again, Andy. Yeah, it's great. Uh, it's great. It was great to have you on. Um, I really enjoyed our conversation last time we talked, and I want to delve a little bit deeper into that. Um, it seems like things are coming to a conclusion, and I guess from my point of view, but I want to know from your point of view, are these coming to a conclusion? And also, does the U.S. elections have any weight on this, if you want to comment on that? Oh, wow. It, it, it's funny. I mean, the conclusion, which is really sad, it's because it's predetermined and it's inevitable, but it's when the U.S. cuts off the arm that is holding that puppet. You know, all... It is it is coming to an end because the U.S. is giving up on another proxy. And they have no choice because they had no... What is so ugly, Andy, is that there's no... They don't have any concern. There's no empathy. There's no kind of humanity. To It is just a thing to be used. And they used it. They don't care about the length of it. They don't care about the brutality, the atrocity. They want to go on as long as they can make it so it can wreak the havoc that they designed it to do. And what's happened is, and, and Russia said this from the beginning, he said, all right, well, you know, I, I think you're crazy because we're not, we, we didn't go into this lightly and we didn't go into this without your provoking it. But if mm -hmm. you're going to try to keep, you know, pissing gasoline on the flames, then it's going to take you longer and you'll lose a lot more. We will too, but we're ready for it or we wouldn't have come in in the first place. And the, the sad thing is that the proxy and I'm speaking in general terms now because it's so thickeningly uh, universal. It's the same. They say they don't even bother to change the font in the <laughs> script. They just do and do and do. And they don't care about the specifics. And they um, they just keep going to, to kind of scratch more. And they don't care about the, the, the proxy. And the proxy has to deal with that. Uh, betrayal and the consequences of being abandoned. That is what I think the new story is in Ukraine is, yes, I think it is coming to an end. But then what? For Russia yeah. and Ukraine, not for the West. West does not give a single shit. And what they don't want is for uh, Germany and Russia to unite they don't, uh, which they, they did a good job trying to stop with the Nord Stream explosions and the sanctions and all that. Uh, they didn't want to push China and Russia closer together, which was, I don't know, unbelievably stupid. I don't, I don't know how, you know, I, I, I just, I, I don't understand what, I don't understand the, the thought process that goes into this. It's like, you know, I, I, I you know, I, I run a school, I deal with kids at all day long. And what you're dealing with the logic of a nine to 12 year old, that makes sense. You say, Oh, honey, Oh, they don't get that yet. Yeah. That doesn't work. If you do that, that just blows up in your face. And you're talking about, I don't know, the neocons, the ultra cons, the Connie cons, whatever, whatever they're using this week. And yeah. it, it's amazing. Like, what? well, what did you think was going to happen? And I say, I say this when uh, you said about uh, Anima's show, like, I, I, it, 
I'm always of two minds and I feel bad. Like I'm, I'm not taking a strong enough stand, but I'm torn with that. Like, did they know this? In which case, wow, they're really evil. They, or, or did they do it anyway and believe their crap? In which case, wow, they're really stupid. And yeah. I think that, I think the worst is the combination because you can be both at the same time. What yeah. if, oops, uh, well, it cost another hundred million dollars and another hundred thousand kids died. Oh, well. So anyway, what's on the agenda? China? How about Taiwan? Okay. Bring it on. Right. You know, I, that's such a good point. And I've thought a lot about that. Is this stupidity or is this evil? And then I come to the conclusion, I think it's both. Yeah. Um, right. And you, as you pointed out, you can be both because how in the world did you think, or why in the world would you think this is a good idea? Only if there was a profit motive that I see. And then the, that's true. That is there. Yeah. And then, and then the second is, I mean, control. And then third is like, well, if you do do this, you're making, you're really provoking some people and pushing different countries that were not, as far as I know, not traditional allies into being allies against us. So it makes no sense. And it's just really stupid. So I just come to that conclusion. But how, what, in your best estimate, how is this going? What's next? That's the question. I know, and that is a that's a huge thing for for uh, for the Russians as well, because this has completely destroyed uh, any uh, prospect of Russia German collab collaboration that was kind of on track, was starting to build new things. I mean, not last year, but certainly within the last 10 years, you know, with, uh, with Schroeder, uh, particularly, uh, and that is, um, something that is not in the cards and the same thing with Ukraine itself. Now you mentioned that the, um, the election, does the election have any, and the funny thing, you know, I mean, uh, Trump can blow a lot of smoke and say that he was what, what did he say that the, the morning after he's going to start and this will be all over the morning after the election and it'll be all done by the time he takes office, which and, and the Democrats can pretend that they are the real defenders of Ukraine. I don't, but, you know, you can, if you're trying to uh, split hairs between these completely identical warmongering parties, uh, it seems that the the Democrats hate Russia and the GOP hates China, more or less, or or a little more than the other, or the other a little more than them, whatever. And then you think, just like that, uh, that dilemma we were just on. Who cares? What that? What what difference does it make? I I also think that all he's doing is reading a bit of a crystal ball. It's over anyway. What they would do this whole time, and they actually told Zelensky this to his face, keep kicking the can down the road, get us past the elections, get us past. So the point is that the, the, the Democrats or the U.S. or the U.S. ruling class or the neocons or the CIA or the uh, elite don't give a damn about Ukraine on November 6th anyway. It was, that's always been the card, right? And right. then you turn to Israel and to China for the next hundred billion dollars. The hell with people who have no houses, you know, and the people in Gaza who are just like uh, 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 genocide for, for the uh, ruling government in Israel. There's, um, there's nothing... There's nothing that ties them to this particular conflict. The, the, the bad thing that I think, because, I mean, a lot of us who in the anti-imperialist camp have been saying this for, for years, actually since 2014 and before, but 
that is certainly now the Americans have just stepped on the toes of the Ukrainians if to pretend that they had their own war going instead of it being basically, you know, the U.S. war on Russia, right? They stopped. First of all, they helped Minsk, which was complete crap. And they, uh, Merkel even admitted later that they were just wasted time. And then uh, uh, the um, Istanbul conference where the, immediately they said, look, we hate to come into your country, but this is how we want this. And they said, yeah, that, that makes sense. We're going to do that. We, we won't do this. And that was the best solution they could have asked for. They were ready to sign it. Yeah. No joke came to Kiev and the uh, Austin and all the, and the Americans just said no. And so mm -hmm. the, the, the war actually started in May 2022, not February, you know, because right. they, they were ready to end it. And yeah. of course, is, is Boris too from the UK? So no, yeah. Boris and the US. And we perfectly exactly, yeah. And the UK was heavily involved in this course thing. And I yes. think that was to make sure that the Russians really hate the Germans. You know, they used leopard tanks. I mean, that you know, who it lets invade Russia, the stupidest thing. And what it is is the most, I mean, again, with the stupid versus stupid v evil 2024. You know, uh, <laughs> And evil so when the, comic book. Uh, yeah, I can sure. see Kapow. You know the 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 uh, in the background. Ooh. Um, is it? Uh, no, it's not. It's not that stupid because it's gonna fail really yeah. badly. And yeah. can you imagine how much it will piss the Russians off to try to invade Kursk, one of the tipping points of World War Two? Right, when you tens of region of of, of uh, legions on each side, like I mean, artillery that would blind the sun, and that's what we're at. Uh, then they're like, he 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 he, which is all British. Like, I mean, it, it, outside of James Bond and special operations, where they don't really they they don't have an army like the Russians or the Chinese or the Americans anymore. They just I say that was a wonderful thing. There was so cute of you to try it. Little poke, little poke in the eye. Say, make the bear look a little and run away for a moment. Yeah. Right. You know, who knows what that's about? But they, it is disruptive, extremely disruptive, and put and manage that can kicking thing again down the road. Now, what is Ukraine? What is it going to be? That's what. That's the question. The the Russians have said from the very beginning, and a lot of us on the left have said this, you know, from time immemorial since Operation Paperclip and Operation Gladio, that this is this is a Nazi like abscess that has been festering since the thirties, and a lot of uh, Azov and and West Ukraine uh, uh, fanatics actually come out and say that the only freedom, the only freedom that Ukraine actually had was between 1935 to, uh, 1939, 1945. And it, that's, they have posters with that on it. And yeah. it's, it's crazy. And now the, the, uh, the Russians having absolutely zero patience for, uh, for splitting hairs, you know, they said, Denazify, demilitarize, and the West said, "What? What? What do you? you what do you mean? I don't. They just like they just like blue and yellow flags. I don't know what you mean." And which the 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 West itself had categorized Azov as neo Nazis for years, and they know that they were recruiting worldwide, recruiting neo Nazis to train, and they um. Then they said, oh, no, this is just nationalism. But they're, 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 they're reacting, they're overreacting, they're calling it, you know, something that it's not. It's just nationalism. And then they started to say ultra, ultra nationalism or hyper nationalism or ex pro neo cono fanata nationalism. I don't know what you can call it. <laughs> Nazism. They're Nazis. They are like 
the heirs to this this very very clear like uh, stratum in make no mistake they are yeah Um, yeah. Uh but now the problem is it succeeded in the same ways that hitler did this i mean and let's let's be honest the same way that one is did the the united states could never unbrainwash all of its people we the children walk down a toy store down the pink aisle or the girls aisle but i call the aisle where pink threw up and then they come back through the boys aisle which is what guns and item toys that happen to have turrets on them and little 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 uh, plastic things where it's open you can feel the trigger you can touch the trigger you too can touch the trigger and this is this is kind of aping a a militaristic mindset uh, from birth, and of course they're very good at it. And they spent billions. Newland uh, bragged about it. They spent billions doing this in Western Ukraine for thirty years. And especially in the Maidan and all of this, they have kids who are trained jumping up and down saying, kill the Moscali, kill, 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 kill the Russians, red Moscali, has selling bones for Halloween that are claiming to be uh, Russian bones for your mm-hmm. soup. You know, I mean, and this is disguised as nationalism. And I, uh, a friend of mine who uh, fled uh, Kharkov, And at at first they were evacuated to Western Ukraine. And he would say that it's absolutely plain as day. You had uh, uh, the the, um, flags, you know, the vertical flags that they have on light poles, right? So they had the two colors of uh, blue and yellow on one side and red and black. The uh, colors of Svoboda of of the uh, of the neo Nazis, and this is one is it ten? He said one is it ten and one is it two? They are just it's it's wow. Surely, it's it's not it's there's nothing specific about it. It is what you have on the city streets, mm-hmm. just as decoration, and they have well, Zelensky himself came. Uh, and had to eventually say, well, you can't tell people who their national hero is supposed to be. Kind of something like that. He said, what are you, crazy? So that yeah. your your country has basically gone insane. Yeah. And you have conflated. Well, he said, of course, is it, is it good to be, you know, nationalist? Well, it depends on who you're oppressing in order to do that. Right. But. Well, I mean, even even people on the left would say that uh, in terms of liberation, national liberation movements were OK, to, as long as you, you're not completely classist. And you, once you own the companies, you can screw everyone else, you know. But um, if you do that, why is Germans can't walk around with German flags, really? Well, they certainly hadn't been able to up until about 20 years ago. It was it, uh, the the problem is what happens with the rump. There's going to be a rump, right? I mean, I'm not being mean. I think that that is, you know, the, and Russia will not be able to monitor or control anything that is not absorbed as Russian territory. Yeah, that's that will be impossible because if they occupy like the I don't know. It reminds me a lot of, and I'm not, I hope I'm not, I hope I'm not pulling, or, well, help me through this and tell me where I'm wrong. It reminds me of a lot of places like the Middle East or even Africa or, or Latin America where they're just left, they've been destroyed, absolutely destroyed. And now it's festering all of this hatred to the destroyers. And that's where terrorism comes from. Correct me if I'm wrong. Well, I think that I, I, I think you have a point. I would add 
that it's uh, the the poverty and destruction yeah. left, and even on uh, terrorism, it certainly is despair. And yeah. believe that's that's certainly what helps uh, migratory patterns. Obviously, yeah. Africa is you know half of Africa is under fifteen. Where the right. hell are they going to go if you don't let them develop? They would, then you can't complain. You can't bomb the crap out of their countries and and hire people to kill all the uh, all the, uh, the the people looking for equality there, and then say, "Oh my God, they're all coming to our country. We can't have that." You stay out of it. I love it. This is like an immigration thing in in West uh, Europe. They said, "If you you want." You want us out of your country? Stay out of ours. You know, that's such a great point. Yeah. Of course they're going to come there because they want out. And I would too. And I would too. You know, I, I mean, wouldn't. It's the place where the money is. I mean, right. and, and it's our money. You have, you have raw product, natural resources that are occurring in nature that are taken, turned into products, commodities, in the classic Marxian sense, is Marx's first chapter, and sold for more than it costs to produce them, and the profit is kept by the people who own the means of production. There's no, there's not even any, well, I hate to say there's not any science to it, because it, it was absolutely bedrock economic science, but now it's so obvious that <laughs> if all you get is the madness, or that, or the, and you, you can't, you don't get any of the clothing or the, you know, that's where the money and, and, and now it's gone so far that you have, I mean, what the hell is it now in Western economies? You're trading, trading trade to trade trade for more trade. This, so you, the, you have this financial, uh, financing trade that is, commodities beyond commodities you're selling air and selling belief yeah. and at the other end of that the people who sit on all the lithium are just having kids die by mining it i i don't know how you could not broaden the viewpoint to that to that view to see the key to all this destruction that is happening in the world. To narrow back down, you know, I think you you have to say, you, how did um, Chileans get beyond Pinochet? Yeah. Or how did uh, Iranians get beyond Savak? Well, they had a revolution. So they're, uh, and, and they're fighting uh, the remnants of the Shah still. In the term, in terms of CIA involvement and everything else, uh, I don't know. the The Japanese had to get beyond Hirohito, and the Germans had to get beyond Hitler. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. I don't want to be obnoxious because I don't. I can't see that the Americans that we would get beyond the exceptionalist doctrine. You know. <laughs> The uh, indispensable nation. Uh, the, uh, I mean, that's maybe I just don't have enough future uh, sight. But I, I, I think it's almost impossible to imagine and to see that the Ukrainians who adopted this thing that was, they, they I mean. The CIA, to be honest, is not stupid. They find they find a colonel with as a colonel, and I'm K E R and not a C O. Yeah, right. And plenty of colonels too, and generals and all that. But to they, if there's something ready to pop, then they will help it pop. Right. But uh, then you have this conflation of nationalism with Nazism. And uh, uh, the Russians call it uh, Ukrainsto, Ukrainianness. It's just the, the uh, noun form of Ukrainsky. Ukrainsky is Ukrainian. Ukrainsto is Ukrainianism. And that's the nationalism. That is the kind of idea of the country. And 
what's happened is that has become inseparable. Mm -hmm. It's neo-Nazism. And it's like the old, the whole nation has lost its, lost its hinges. And yeah. they didn't you know. I mean, people have, people said this for a couple of years after. You remember some reports in, in Britain, in West Germany, West Jersey, uh-oh, showing my age. I can tell. That the, uh, God, these Ukrainians are really racist. And they, they're really gimme, gimme about the, uh, the Western help, like they're demanding and like they, you can't, and, uh, you know, these are, these are not full fledged, you know, but the, there were all sorts of pieces like this and, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, in the, in the Western press after the exodus, uh, after they, they came and, uh, they allowed them to resettle in Western Europe. And uh, uh, to a great extent, uh, many people regret it. And part of it was, I think, tied to this notion of superiority, of supremacy, mm -hmm. of, uh, in, I mean, I don't know, any, any proxy that you pick, well, take Israel, the same thing. The, it, I, I think they overlap very clearly that, uh, so what's what I was getting at, it seems like there's an overlap. Go ahead. Well, you can, we need, you have to send us more tomahawks. Right. You bet you have to send, well, I mean, we have to, we have to, you have yeah, to. We have to. I, I, I know. And if from my perspective or yours, you're thinking, well, yeah, if you set this thing in motion, you kind of have your own responsibility that you've said. You've said you're going to de defend them to the last Ukrainian. Well, you set yourself on a slippery slope there, but a guy, the guy has a pulley. If he's saying, look, you started us out this way, you better. But when you back up a little bit, you say, wait a minute, why? Why? That's, you, you're starting to sound crazy. Okay. Yeah. You know, no, at some point, at some point, we're not going to do this. Tomahawks. Do tomahawks even work anymore? What is this about tomahawks? Yeah, it's funny on that point. They're from the Iran war, I mean, Iraq war, aren't they? I, I just, I'm not a military specialist, so I listen and say. No, that's a good point. It makes me, it reminds me of we sent over a bunch of F-16s. <laughs> because they're <laughs> twice as good as the F-8s. Right. Like, I was thinking, do we still use F-16s? And then if we send them, who's going to fund them? I can see. I guess, I guess we are because nobody over there. And, and, of course, and then you raise, holy hell, it, it might be North Koreans training somewhere in Russia, which they've done many times. They, you know, yeah. it's not, that's nothing new about that. But he's like, oh my God, my God. wait, these are Polish pilots with Swedish computer experts on American planes. They could do that. Yeah, it goes back to is this. Is this evil or stupid? Like, I'm like, you just baby love. It is. I know. I know. I get, I, I get a lot of uh, comments like that. Like, he laughs a lot about things that are really, really. Well, well, uh, you know, it's funny. It's, I, laugh so that. I laugh too because it's so absurd. It's so absurd. It really is. You know what I read about Kafka? And then I think. I think it has to do with Halloween, but you know, everyone Kafka esque, it's crazy. But one of the things that he said that is not as widely quoted as he said, one day I realized that life is a costume fighting, and I came dressed as myself. You know, I know that quote. Yeah, it's awesome. What are you? So I didn't do it before. Was that maybe it was because I was Googling something for Halloween. I don't know. Let's talk about um, the Middle East here. And it's out of, it seems like it's not as front page news as it was a couple of weeks ago. And why, why would it be? Right. Right. Well, there's something going on next week. This was filmed on the 1st of November, or we quoted this on the 1st of November 2020. But yeah, it's, it's not on the front page anymore. 
but well, I don't think that is because of the election. But anyway, yeah, partly. But go well, tell me, well, work that. Then why is that? You because think? it didn't go so well. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Oh, he, Israel is standing up for itself and sending cigarette butts into the canal in Tehran. It, oh, oh well, we we it, high high class. I mean, we can't. We uh. They slaughtered in southern Lebanon. Yeah. They they absolutely failed in uh, the secret attack on Tehran. Mm -hmm. They underwent a. Uh, they were retaliating for what was a retaliation for what uh, whatever you know, um, but the. Iranians completely overwhelmed the so-called vaunted Iron Dome. Talk about superiority and supremacy. That's a whole, that's another old, like, subset of jargon, you know, that, that you can use about uh, this entity and the people and the, the history and everything in the U.S. Um, but, so that's fish. Okay. Yeah. And then the... Uh, air defense in Iran was so successful that there hasn't been, I don't, I, I don't know. We, we don't really know, actually, but uh, it doesn't seem that people seem quite common in, in Iran. They're not willing, like, to reach out and, and uh, retaliate again. They didn't clamor for it the way... I think they would have if thousands of people had been killed or, or whatever. Yeah, it's, they don't have to. That's not what they want. They want to be left alone. They yeah. talk what they want. That's all, it's all the Lebanese want. That's all the Gazans want. That's all the Iranians want. And but they want to Yeah. All right. All right, then. Yeah. Well, what if, well, what if I kicked your car? <laughs> I a little pissed, but I mean, still, I really don't think, well, I could kick it in the gas tank so that it leaked. And, and, and then I'd light a sparkler and I'd run around it. Uh -huh. well, I guess the, your uh, your educational background is coming. Oh, I know. I'm sorry. It can hurt you. And out. Big wood. Kids are asking, they said someone is a fascist. What is a fascist? Oh, all right. Everyone sit down. Mm. But it's, it's just you, you don't think it has to do with the election, though, that it's not front page news. And and you, you might be right. But I was that was my first assumption because. Oh, no. Was, why yeah. Yeah. no, definitely. I think that that, that it's um, the uh, uh, Democrats and their uh, sycophants in the mainstream press are uh, careful. They're, they're scared. Because they first of all they block the Palestinian from even speaking at the DNC in their own party. I was an elected representative. I don't know. And I don't know. Um, I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And so they don't want. And, and uh, Harris is trying to say that she's somehow different from by, even though she's part it's of the election. and it. Even on the view, she can't even say what she would have done differently with a Sotwell question like that. You have no answer. And uh, the, the genocide in Gaza is uh, only as important as groceries, right? Which is one thing she said. In, in, and so they want to, to kind of tamp it down. Yes. Mm -hmm. So there's, that is absolute. Because let's face it, if uh, you need a, a much lower turnout in Dearborn, to, which is the mecca of the uh, Arab American uh, the population, and uh, that throws Michigan, and you know, I mean, so it that also the 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 youth vote, it just have a lower turnout, you know, be a third party vote, anything that has. For the first time in a long time, that uh, U.S. with just really, really ugly foreign policy 
might have some sort of effect on uh, the election is, I say, uh, really interesting. The sad mm -hmm. part, is it doesn't, there, there are no choices. There's nothing, there's nothing that can get you a better outcome, but, but you're talking about the status quo. Yeah. You can't run away from what you are currently doing. Oh, oh, and say, well, we'll, we'll put pressure on them after the election. Was there something really bad about dying on November 5th versus dying on November 7th? And we could never have that happen. Mm -hmm. Children, children on fire in a hospital tent. That's terrible. No, I know, but it was on November 8th. Yeah. The whole, uh oh, that's horrible. We should prove that. Yeah. Well, this, yeah. is, this is a video actually from October 26th. Oh, well, that could. Well, yeah, it's who I, I have a theory and, and I just, I've been thinking about this for a while. I wasn't going to ask you, but I will. It's, it's really, it's come down to American politics has come down to, I think it's not so much a party thing. It's more of an oligarch, oligarchs and people being ruled. Those, that's the distinction or those that want war and profit from it. And those want to, don't want war or to want to be left alone. Am I, am I wrong? And where am I going with that? See, I don't think the party, I see you, you're asking, that's a softball question kind of for me, because I never, I, I, I haven't believed in the party thing for, you know, a few decades. So well, we probably, yeah, I haven't voted in a while. To the election, I wrote for my mom sometimes. <laughs> Red El Gastro or Jacob Lowry. No, no, no. 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 I'm, ten, I'm, I'm not saying it, but it's like, yeah, I just see that. I guess that. Go ahead. I'm sorry for her. No, but I think that is absolutely uh, true, both, but it has been true within the parties as well. That yeah. is a hierarchy. What is really uh, oligarchic paternalism? Is what I call it. It's like if you can use you can we have billionaires who have absolutely worked themselves to the bone, to the bones of millions who employed them. Um, but we say billionaires because that implies some sort of earned something. Oligarchs are in Greece and Russia and in uh, authoritarian systems. So, but of course, it is exactly that. All, it's an oligarchic paternalism. If we please the oligarchs, they will give us maybe a higher minimum wage or something. Mm -hmm. But we have no, there is no connection between the people and the policy. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, I, well, I'm a radical. I can say that. Nobody can sue me for it yet. But uh, you don't have to be. Carter says this. Carter has said this flat out. This is the right wing of the 1976 Democrat Party, the one who retook the South, remember that, all that? Um, and he just said it's an oligarchy. There is no connection between the people and the policies that, of, the, of those who rule them. Mm -hmm. And his, his little, uh, you know, democracy uh, 501c3 there, would never take on an election in this country because it's a mess. It's written. Yeah. There's no central authority. There's no, there's no consistency. There's no, there's nothing. It's, it's a farce. And I think it has always worked. Like they say, it's, the system isn't broken. Mm -hmm. It's worked like it's supposed to. If I was going to say that's working. That's, that's, yeah. What I remember watching some local uh, election with, a uh, friend of mine, we used to watch election returns. So it's kind of fun. You get drunk, watch the news. That's a lead. And uh, some guy in Somerville, some of which, some of it was a suburb of Boston. You get drunk really fast, right? You'd be on two things. And particularly, some of it was one of the dirtiest elections in Massachusetts, which is saying a lot. Well, old Democrat party hijinks, you know. And the guy said, Well, we tried our best. And, uh, the best man, the best man won and they got more votes. And that's what democracy is all about. And my friend, after pouring a shot, 
flipped out the TV and he said, yeah, right. That's what democracy is all about. Two virtually indistinguishable rich men paying, outspending the other to prove that the mm-hmm. other one is dead when he was seven. That's it. I, I remember it so well from that night because it's like, yeah, that's that's pretty much that's what humans Pretty much what it ends. Yeah. Well, um, Dan, I think we'll wrap up, but I, yeah, I know we could talk forever. We could go on forever. I hope the viewers got something out of this. I certainly did. And it really, what's been on my, obviously the elections on my mind, but not in the elections on my mind, not from a, not from an anxiety thing, but just, it's almost from, from humor. It's, 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 I, well, I think the anxiety for me would say is the dichotomy. You mentioned a certain dichotomy of, you know, uh, but I think there is a dichotomy in this election, which has nothing to do with policy or party. And it is very said versus the people. Very well said. People I will agree with you. against Kamala Harris because they are sick to death of being told what to do, what to do. Yeah, and I really say, yeah, but that's against your interest. People don't have to care. First of all, you haven't given them much of a choice anyway. Yeah. And, you know, Trump said something obnoxious. Yeah, I know the guy's obnoxious. He's been obnoxious for 50 years. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows. What do you know about this one? That's yeah. Enough. And people are waking up to that. Yeah. It's, I'm, I'm like, like you, I'm not voting for him either. I'm not, I don't even know that there, there are a couple of local questions. You know, how's the, does the high school get a new football field? It's booth. Right. Well, uh, I appreciate your time and, uh, yeah, I really do. And, uh, I'd love to have you on again really soon. We'll uh, look lots of stuff to talk about. All right. Thanks, man.